Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel and Bahati Life podcast. If you are hanging out with me on one of your favorite podcasting platforms. So tonight we are going to be talking about the eclipse that's happening in the sign of Aries. This is going to start eclipse season big time buku with a big ass bang because at the same time that we're having the eclipses, a lot of the planets that were once retrograde are going to start slowly moving forward like one after the other after the other and this is going to carry on into the start of the new year. That's right, 2023. Now, I do want to say full disclosure that I am not only filming a YouTube channel for you, or YouTube video for you guys, but I'm also doing the podcast and I don't want to say that I'm winging it as far as like pulling this chart, but I do want to say full disclosure, I am looking at this chart. I don't have any notes that I am relying on or anything else like that. I'm interpreting this chart as I go along. So it's going to be a whole lot of ebbs and flows. Even as I'm looking at this chart now, I'm just kind of taking it all in. So please have grace with me when it comes to the organization of this video. I just finished Astro Chat Live, which is pretty much where I go live every Monday, um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and talking about the transits that we're experiencing that week and also you know, what's to come because I always like to talk about the future. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Once again, let's go ahead and dive into this. Please, uh, this is either going to be really great or really messy. And by it, I mean the quality of this video or this podcast. Okay, so uh, first things first, guys. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. No, it's not my purple lipstick that I'm wearing right now. It's the fact that these eclipses <laughs> are happening and people actually not <laughs> looking at it like the line from my lip sticks is like pretty much rubbed off whatever it is what it is oh my god it's so embarrassing Ugh. but okay um eclipses notoriously set people running it freaks people out because they are constantly being told that once a, a um a full moon eclipse happens especially a full moon eclipse once a full moon eclipse happens it's like game over lights out things can't be fixed things can't be rectified the change is just so unbearable and so drastic that where we're at now it's gonna we just have to live with it for the rest of our lives and then we die yes and no <laughs> Yes and no. So eclipses do bring on permanent change, but it's change that needed to happen. It's change that needed to occur. I feel like the majority of us do know that and understand that, but we do need the reminder. I myself sometimes need the reminder. Like I was telling Astro Chat Live this Monday, which was so dope, by the way, such a vibe, that these planets and the energies of things like how they're unfolding, they're not pointing fingers at you and picking on you and being like, yo, you could have done better. You should have done better. You did not Now I'm going to like put you over my lap and just smack you on the high knee and you're just going to have to just live with it. No, it's not like that. Um, I do think that the planets just like you are giving a certain level of grace to the situation and the circumstances. We doing the best that we can. Just like this lipstick and this lip liner, we are hanging on by a fucking thin ass line honey but we showed up but we showed up so give some credit where credit is due right that's what these planets just like you guys are giving that to me right now right right these planets are also doing the same thing for you at this point in your life like i said the eclipses do bring on drastic change but change is inevitable change is hap is going to happen and it definitely happens just like with any season in our lives, eclipse season is a time of crazy radical change. And a lot of it is things that we don't even realize that it is that we need it um, until years, not years, but like months, weeks down, later down the line where you're just like, damn, looking back, thank God I was in that situation for too long and I knew that it wasn't working out. I tried everything in my power to make it work and regardless of what I did regardless of what could have happened it just i just i'm happy for where i am right now the eclipses scan 
all the energy, literally all the energy of our life, and they say, listen, this is a weak link. This isn't going to work out. This, you want it right now, but in the future, you ain't gonna want it, honey, because it ain't gonna look cute. And there's something else bigger and better or lesser and more valuable that's out there for you and we just want to give that to you or the change that you feel now and you being uncomfortable is going to be just what you need in order to propel you into that place that you're going to inevitably want to be the planets are so good at that like i said they're not so personal in the in the form that they say listen i don't like joanne and I know that she's been wanting love for so long, but like just because of the way that her hair is and the way that this is and her attitude, we're just gonna completely destroy this because we just don't like her. It's not like that. It's more like teaching you certain things or revealing to you certain things, whether it's an external thing or an internal thing so that you can adjust accordingly and to think change that was going to happen regardless and you don't want life to continue to change and you're trying to drag the same things the same people the same circumstances with you into the next phase the next stage in your life it's eclipse season it's time to kind of shake things up a little bit now having said that i totally understand that a lot of you guys are like yo jess there things have been changing left and right like i you know it's wild how things have been changing and I get that. Um, a lot of this has to do with these major planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto. Not only are they changing signs, or they have been changing signs for the last like few years, let's be honest, um, but the way that they, as they're moving, they're not moving solo dolo. They are 1000% resting on each other, fighting with each other. You have the planet Saturn, which loves to do things, keep things kind of structured routine. The way that we've been doing it is the way that I want to keep it. Challenging off with Uranus, the planet that's just like, yo, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Uranus is all about like, Uranus is like party boy, Saturn is like business boy. Business boy boy. <laughs> He's at his desk. He's stubborn. Um, trying to pull up Saturn is like trying to pull up a, a, a tooth that is really, really like probably like in their, in their mouth, like a wisdom tooth. And I want to say Uranus is like what the cap that was put over a tooth that now you got to pull it up because there's there's been a better improvement in the cap that was put on, on on the root canal when you were a child. So it's like you're thinking about the future because the tooth that you're pulling out or the cap that you're replacing, <laughs> me with my metaphors, but the cap that you're replacing, it's the metal that was in your mouth. It Back in the day it served, but now there's better advances and the metal that's in your mouth is not going to make you sick and blah, blah, blah. So let's just pull it out and think about the future and think about the planet and all those other things. That's where Uranus is at. So when these two planets are just like, eh, they're, they have their own way, their own individual way of approaching things and finding solutions, you can have a cosmic battle in the skies, honey. Not only are we seeing this in our government and our politics and our intimate lives, but wait, what? What did I just say? Not only are we seeing this in our intimate lives, but we're definitely seeing this in government, politics, businesses, money, etc., etc. We're seeing it with the wars that are kind of popping off in the Ukraine. It's not even like a war at this at this point. It never really was. It's more about like rev like a revolution for humanity. And if it can happen there, it can happen over here, it can happen anywhere, and it's not fair that it's happening, period. Let's talk about that. Let's have that conversation. So yeah this is i know that it's kind of tough it's tight it's uncomfortable the pressure is immense a lot of you guys are exhausted in some area in your life because we're all going through this i myself i was talking about this on astro chat live it's wild the the, the change that has come through into our lives because you're karmically designed to do differently that way you're not repeating a certain past and what you've how you've learned to do things there are better ways of doing things and there is a safer space for you to be there are safer spaces to to go to and that's where these planets are kind of guiding every single one of us is where how can we evolve and what are we involved evolving into 
the eclipse um, Aries, right? This is where this full moon is happening, the sign that it's happening. Aries is all about the self. It's I am. It's how you identify yourself. Aries right now, my love, is crowded with the planet Jupiter, who I fucks with pretty hard because he's so much of a benefactor. He loves to give. He's very generous. He's very jovial. He reminds me of one of my spirit guides, side note, who I call Santa because he, back in the day when he first approached me, this is my spirit guide, not the planet Jupiter, although they are kind of the same. Um, he approached me when I was getting acupuncture work done by my mother, who was a shaman and acupuncture doctor. Um, he showed up and he was like tickling my collarbone. I was like, um, what is going on? My mom's like, honey, I'm working on your solar plexus. I'm working on your sacral chakra points right now and some healing because I had like a cold at the time. Oh my God, my lip liner is like crazy right now. I, I keep pausing really quickly to look at this video. I'm just like, damn, just like what? Anyways, um, my mom's like, girl, I'm working on that you're healing and I'm working on your cold. Why are you laughing and being tickled? It wasn't the needles, you guys. It wasn't the needles from the acupuncture moment. It was my spirit guide. <laughs> I know I sound crazy, but it was my spirit guide. He's always been like super Santa with me, which is so funny because I'm like the opposite of him. I'm, well, I can be goofy, don't get me wrong, but like I am very serious, very, very serious. And he kind of like makes fun of things and makes me laugh and reminds me to play. And as much wisdom as he has, he's very much a good time. He's a good time and, he, and he's here for a long time. And Jupiter is the same way. So back to the planets and away from me talking about my spirit guide moments, um, Jupiter is currently transiting through the sign of Aries. Again, this is where this full moon is happening. Jupiter is retrograde at this moment in time, but he's sitting directly opposite of Mercury, the planet of communication that only just recently went direct in the sign of Virgo. So there's a lot about um, intuitive downloads that intuitive and mental downloads that help you to do differently, be differently, evolve differently, cement yourself into something that is better, long has longevity potential capabilities. Is that the right? I don't know, but we're just gonna go with it for now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, but um, yeah. So. Um, and also, Ky Chiron, the wounded healer, is sitting here and just kind of cracks open the part of you that had, has or had disbelief in who you are, how you identify, and what you're capable of doing, being, becoming, etc., etc. I do want to say that Aries is a self-starter. Aries is confident in what can happen so it will thrust itself into the unknown with the hopes that, you know, that leap of faith, you know, there you will be caught. I, I do want to say some, for a lot of you guys, um, you, how you've viewed yourself is being challenged in a lot of ways. And this is, likely coming from relationships. Um, even as I'm saying that there is a strong sense of the word abandonment that's coming through, as I'm looking at the charts, the full moon is happening in the sign of Aries, but the full moon can't happen if the moon isn't being lit up by the energy of the sun and the sun is sitting in the sign of Libra. Libra rules relationships, harmony, alignment, justice, fairness. And if with these planets, you guys, I always tell you, I don't look at just one transit. I look at the entirety of the chart and I look at like how they are reflecting and like upon each other and what they're creating, the dynamic in the room. If the astrological chart was a party and the planets are the guests that are here and you're the host, what kind of party are you working with? Is this a rager? Did someone, is someone puking into the pool? Because that happens. Did someone get their fingers caught in the, a meat grinder because they were pushed like trying to figure out is this a air fryer or is but it turned out to be like a meat <laughs> like I know that these <laughs> I know that these examples are really morbid I'm so sorry because so many of you guys are so innocent and I'm my sense of humor is gruesome at best um I'm sorry for that but 
what kind of party are we having here? Or is it like a book party? Like, are we all sitting around talking about how much we love the Harry Potter sequel? Like, I could, that sounds like a good time to me. Have you guys checked out Game of Thrones? I've had a few people talk to me about Game of Thrones lately, so I'm going to be checking it out. So just let me know if you guys, what are you watching also on Netflix, HBO, or whatever else? Just curious, just curious. Feel free to um, tweet at me on the Twitter or email me, but back to the planets. So um, yeah, guys, with Chiron retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, and the full moon happening in the sign of Aries, it's really revealing a lot of ourselves and un uncovering a lot of ourselves that we may not be the most confident to look at and to observe. And it comes through how like our relationships how people treat us what did it teach us about ourselves it's easy sometimes like a default setting for us to be like well i don't need nobody or they don't like me i don't like them like it is what it is i'm moving forward but we're as human beings we're social animals and we're social creatures so how people treat us and what people are saying, even though sometimes it doesn't mean anything, sometimes it does mean something because it, it sends a lesson, it teaches us something. What has your relationships, intimately, your romantic relationships, your relationship with the world, your relationship with whatever Libra rules within your chart, but definitely fucking relationships, trust me on it. How, what have they taught you about yourself and what can you learn from them? If there's certain things, people, situations that have you've been separated from because these planets are have separation written all over them, crazy radical separation that leads to like, I can't do this anymore. Meaning like the way that you might've been living your life, maybe it's not, maybe there's a pattern where not that you're not easy to love, but you have so many freaking boundaries and walls and you're so stubborn and you're, you never apologize and you just cut people off without ever trying to work things out because that's just the way that you've learned things to be. Maybe there's a pattern that you can observe, see and learn and do better because maybe just this time during this eclipse, there's something that you don't want to let go of. There's someone that you don't want to let go of or there's something about you that you have to let go of within yourself so that you don't continue to repeat the same traits that push people away or make it difficult for you to be approach, approach, approachable. Um, with Mercury transiting, Mercury rules communication, our thoughts and how we in interpret information and also articulate that information with Mercury transiting through the sign of Virgo at the time of the full moon. This is also, and aspecting Jupiter. <sighs> this is where we really have to have that conversation with ourselves and even have a difficult conversation with other people and just be like, yo, when you know better, you do better, but maybe I don't know what to do in a situation. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? because that's what this full moon is kind of giving. With the sun transiting through the sign of Libra, you'd be surprised who loves you, who wants to help you, who wants to lend a helping hand. And with Venus, the planet of relationships and love and abundance also transiting through Libra, all she wants to do is get, is get together. All she wants to do is give a hug. All she wants to do is lend support and you would be surprised, honey, where that support, where that love will come from, especially when the full moon sits directly on top of Chiron, the same little asteroid, yeah, it's an asteroid, that has been transiting through Aries, teaching you a whole lot about yourself. Remember, Aries is the sign of I am. This is how we define ourselves, but as we live our lives, we start to change, shift, move, evolve accordingly. I am is how you define yourself and who you are may be changing radically every day. Who are you now? Who are you right now? Who are you in your relationships? What do your relationships look like? Do you feel good in a relationship, do you feel good in the relationship in your business? It's, it's again, it's not just romantic connections, although that's definitely there. I can't stress that enough. It's how you harmonize and align with the world. 
because it teaches us a lot and it reflects a lot just like the sun reflects its rays on the moon and reflects it back to us so that we can see it. And we're just like, oh my god, here on Earth, a full moon. Is that an eclipse? And then whammy! <laughs> Change. <laughs> whammy. All right, so yeah, I guess that's that. That's what I want to share with you guys. And that's my little, wow, my lip liner is ridiculous. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this podcast. Blessings upon blessings for you at the time of this full moon. Uh, take this message, how it resonates, and apply it as you will, as you see fit. I hope that it met you at the right time. Um, I do invite you to check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you're on my YouTube channel, check out my podcast because it's there. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm sending you guys all of my love. Be sure to set intentions for this full moon, especially when it comes to businesses, relationships, the I am. How are you identifying lately? How do you identify? Embody that, be that, and be open to changing so that the I am that you are currently claiming to be is the best I am that you could ever be. Let's see. I'm sending you guys all my love. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Queen Bee Homestead Co. is the cozy home of Queen Bee Homestead Body Butters. Each butter is created with all natural ingredients, including rich shea butter, creamy coconut oil, fragrant rose water, herbs, and high vibrational essential oils. The butters are then whipped to a decadent perfection, which you can use to naturally moisturize and protect your skin from the harsh elements, including UV rays from the sun, and nourish and protect your hair. Explore the Small Homestead's website where you'll find all of the best-selling blends ranging from Energy Clearing Bad Vibe Shield, which features pure lavender and sage essential oils, to the Warm Honey Goddess Body Butter, which features cardamom and actual honey. Shipping is fast to our friends in the U.S. Queen Bee Homestead Co., your source for simplicity, purity, and intentionality in your beauty essentials.